interesting and as I see them, as I personally see them as rock stars in their field. As you can see, I have here, you know, index cards. I don't have a laptop. So it feels like I'm in a talk show. So it also makes me look cool. So all right. So science communication is, you know, I'm gonna start with that, a brief explanation of the scientific communication or science communication as a whole. Then I'm gonna introduce you guys. Then I'm gonna go on with the questions. That's all right. right. Again. Now, science communication is, is described as this variety of practices that transmit scientific ideas, methods, and research in an understandable and useful and accessible way. But to be fair, somehow this discipline, as I may, as I love to call it as a discipline, is fairly new. And, you know, it's also relatively a fresh idea, one that requires its own skill sets, which is a blend of a deep scientific understanding and a creative storytelling, whether it's spoken, written, or visual. Now, so how do you know current and aspiring science communication communicators, I mean, such as yourselves here, develop this specific skill set? Well, one way is to stand on the shoulders of you know SciCom or scientific communication giants, like people that we have here, and learn from them. And to make your life easier, we've done just that, you know. We have done just that, and we've you know compiled a short list of, again, as I call them, rock stars, as I personally see them in their respective fields. Now, the first person we have here is Dr. Malki Munia, which is a professor at the School of Aerospace and Automotive Engineering of the International University of Rabat. She obtained her engineering diploma in aeronautical engineering from the International University of Rabat, then pursued a master's in science of science in aerospace engineering at Mississippi State University in 2017, right? Right. So Dr. Malki holds a PhD in mechanical engineering from Mississippi State University. And by the way, she was nominated as the youngest PhD holder in mechanical engineering in Morocco in 2020. So I think she deserves a, you know, a round of applause. Perfect. There's more. So in Los Alamos National Lab in New Mexico, she has investigated the creep behavior of various stainless steel grades using VPIC crystal plasticity code, which is really impressive. And we have with us Professor Hassan Ait Hussain from Scientific Morocco. He received his bachelor's in physics, master's of science in materials chemistry from Ibn Zohar University, and co-directed PhD degree in material science from Toulon University in France in 2016. He also joined the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology as a as a postdoctoral researcher for three years, right? Three, four years? Yeah. All right. And then appointed at University at Polytechnic University of Mohammed VI in as a researcher. By the way, I think I know you know more than you know yourselves, you know, because <laughs> I was having so much fun researching you guys. You have like such an impressive curriculum and and wide range of experiences, which is really inspiring, especially at your young ages. So I'm trying to get there. Now, he's currently an assistant professor of chemistry at the Mohammed V University in Rabat. His research, his research, I mean, focuses on the development and synthesis of novel functional materials from the nanoscale to microscale. And obviously it's for the environmental and catalytic uh, applications. And last and not least, we have the legendary Dr. James L. Green. <laughs> he is an American physicist and retired chief, sci chief scientist for, Na for NASA. He received his PhD in, sp in space physics University of Iowa in 1979, and then worked at NASA till his retirement in last January, January 1st, 2022. Over his career, he has received a number of prestigious awards. The first one, I think, was in 1988. He received the Arthur S. Fleming Award given for outstanding individual performance in the federal government, as well as was also awarded the Japan's Kotani Prize in 1996 in recognition of his you know, international science data management activities. And recently he received the NASA Exceptional Achievement Medal for the, for the New Horizon flyby of the Pluto system. And thank you all for joining us here. All right, wanna start with the questions? Yes. All right, perfect. Yep. So Let's this one it. is for you. So what do you believe is the impact of space camp and race to space in changing the aerospace landscape I mean, macro level perception of the Moroccan youth, more specifically, and in, in Morocco and mainstreaming it in a way within within the youth. Uh, thanks, Malini, for for the for having me here. Talk first of all, I want to thank the Scientific Morocco Association for letting me be here and uh, 
speaking on behalf of the Scientific Morocco Association. So in Scientific Morocco, so our target or our goal is to, to lead the way for the, for the new generation of students, professors and researchers. So we are showing them the path to, 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 and to strive uh, for excellency in STEM uh, education, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And as Nofel presented before, so we have lack and vacancies in these in these areas. So for Race to Space, uh, it was a very interesting uh, competition because we showed to the to the public that the, the students, the middle-aged students from uh, 16 to 18 or 15 to 18, that they can speak English, that they can understand physical and scientific uh, phenomena. Uh, we try to show them also that uh, with this uh, kind of competition, the Moroccan, uh, the next Moroccan generation of students uh, might lead the way in uh, inspiring other people for uh, pursuing their dreams to become, for example, uh, astronauts or other uh, uh, jobs for doctors or PhDs, etc. So it was very interesting competition, and I guess Wijdan also, who, who who is a, a manager of this event, was the was in the first edition of this of the race to space, and uh, she was among the twelve uh, students that went to Huntsville, Alabama, in the U.S. Uh, to pursue the space camp and to, to see the simulations of the of the astronauts in the, in the space or the International Space Station. Uh, so we are showing uh, to the people that the scientific phenomenon can be understood in a simplified way. So we are trying to put these students to understand so the, the, the three mechanisms of uh, scientific uh, reasoning. So it's to analyze, to have the data, to show the data, and to uh, explain the data to others in a very simplified way. And uh, it was... Uh, a uh, very uh, interesting uh, way uh, as all the students have uh, reached their goals and they have showed that they have the ability to understand scientific uh, uh, phenomena, especially in physics, in astronomy, in quantum physics, etc. So it is, I guess, that's, that's one way of uh, showing that the communication of science uh, can be uh, valuable for, for students. Uh, as academician, I think it's it's always about a story. If you want to write a, a research article, it's a story. So you should begin with introduction, what you have, what you have done, and what is the the, the lacks of your research in order to improve it. It's the same way. So we have we we have this analogy from academician to 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 people in in, in a very in mid school or in in secondary school. Thank you. I mean, and you can see, I mean the fruitful, I mean, result of, of the data, I mean, if you see Ms. Dan here, yeah. I mean, organizing this event, so, by, I mean, by inspiring her, she now inspiring a lot of youth now. Yes. And also, like, it's brilliant, I mean, scientific communication has been for ages now, but just the inward one, from expert to expert. But the revolutionary side of it now is, like, the out, outreach side of it. So going from experts to, to, to the general audience, which is really nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, Dr. Muniema, please. I mean, what are some of the space? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for having me here. Thank you for your nice introduction as well. Well, it is true that Morocco right now has launched two satellites and which were made by Airbus and TELUS. All those efforts are appreciated and all those efforts are huge. However, we need to put a little bit more efforts in order to probably one day design our proper satellite, 100% Moroccan satellite. And we can do that. It seems a little bit big, but we can do that into a number of actions. So the first thing probably would be to encourage the research and space sector and obviously help or dedicate a specific funding for the university programs, for space programs, and help students um, have more awareness about the space domain itself, because it would be it would be easier if we kind of mature this awareness towards the space sector and explain to um, to all the society what are uh, the products that space are offering, what are the services that space are offering. That would be easier and more encouraging to them to tackle that new domain for them. 
So uh, we can do that as well by establishing or building a solid capacity of uh, skills and expertise in, um, in, in space domain. And obviously, one, why not one day build our own facility for testing, for assembling satellites? That would be awesome if we have that possibility here in Morocco. And obviously, obviously again, I go back to the point, I emphasize the point that we need to, to um, encourage research to, to give a dedicated budget for research in the space domain and encourage people doing research in space. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you. All right, perfect. So now, I mean, being an effective communicator is more important than ever, right? I mean, with so many current issues involving lack of science engineering literacy in the general public. So I want to ask you, I mean, as a scientist, how do you build a compelling narrative, per se, and communicate more effectively to the media and general audience? without losing the most important uh, essence of it all, which is the science. Well, thanks so much for inviting me to come and talk. Uh, I apologize for not being there in person, but um, uh, my doctor has prohibited me from flying and driving there was too far. So <laughs> uh, great question. A what we're, what we're finding, of course, today, in, in my perspective, is the science that we do, in, in particular that NASA funds, that I'm so familiar with, isn't done until we communicate it. And that communication means not only peer-to-peer, -peer, scientist to scientist, which we do all the time at meetings, but to the public. And we want to impart the tremendous excitement that's going on. We want to impart the you know, when we launch things, how they get into orbit, or do they land on another planet or fly by something we've never seen before, and the scientists are in awe, we want to be able to share that. And for us to be able to do that effectively, we have to really go to where uh, the current generation is, uh, is, is, is using a variety of social media. Uh, this means Instagram, this means uh, uh, the um, uh, Twitter, this means uh, using venues like podcasts. You know, NASA has a whole series of podcasts, whereas as we interview scientists and engineers, talk about some of the activities that we're doing, posting those interviews uh, and, and getting more and more people excited about, about what we do. Uh, there are certain events that happen uh, that are of particular importance. For instance, in planetary science, uh, when we launch something, and it may take many days, months, perhaps years to get to a target, and then it has to perform perfectly, and it's so far away from Earth, and it has so many things that it has to do, we want to be able to talk to the public about now this is an event. So sometimes, Building a story up to an event and then focusing everyone's attention on that event allows us to then relay that story. Uh, you know, building spacecraft is not done quickly. It takes many years of hard work, uh, engineers and scientists working closely together, uh, and then you have to launch it, and, and there's just so many things that could go wrong. Many people spend an entire career working in these particular areas and, and are immersed in the topic, but they don't know how to communicate it. And that's why uh, NASA has in particular brought in a, a series of people uh, to be able to help communicate that. Fortunately, um, I enjoyed teaching at the International Space University since 1992, where I'm sure the first set of lectures I gave in 1992 were lousy, but uh, I got better over time. And I, I learned how to interact with a whole diversity of students and, uh, uh, and, and the public. And, uh, and so I, I do perhaps as many as uh, 60 lectures to the public a year in, in various, uh, various um, uh, formats and venues. So you, you have to be able to have the ability to communicate and then communicate the excitement. It's not always about the science. Sometimes it's about the engineering. 
you know, landing a one ton rover on Mars is really hard to do. How do we, how do we talk about how hard it is to do? And then once it's landed, what is it going to do? What is the science? And so those things in space are intimately related and it just really makes for exciting stories to be, to be developed. But then once again, we have to get those stories to where that next generation in social media is hanging out. And so we work very hard to be able to do that. Thank you. Well, I got news for you. It is cool. It is really cool. Yeah, I mean, all we have to do is share the cool. <laughs> no, it is cool. It is cool. I mean, also, I'm sure. I mean, the early lectures that that you gave. I mean, I'm sure they weren't that bad. I mean, I would personally do the impossible just to have a five minutes class with a legendary professor as yourself. So, if you want to give me one of those lousy, lousy lectures, I'm here for them. All right, we can do that. I mean, also to you know to you know, go with the same way, as he's been saying, there's this great book. I mean, he says science is cool, so you gotta read. So he said this great book that I've read, I think a couple, couple months ago, which is called, I mean, Escape from the Ivory Tower by Nancy Barron, which is just, you know, tells everything about that. I mean, which is literally a how to guide. I mean, how to do it, how to communicate and how to deal with, you know, the mostly with the misinterpretations by the media and get the most of, you know, of interviews and interactions like this one, for instance. I mean, she also provides, you know, an illuminating insights, I mean, with what policymakers and journalists uh, ex expect from science and how it differs from what, sci what scientists expect from policymakers and journalists, which is really different and two different worlds. Now, okay, back to you, Mr. Professor Hassan. So what do you reckon, I mean, the importance of spreading scientific communication to find, I mean, to fight to the science and misinformation. And could you provide some solutions? For instance, God forbid, flat earthers. So. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess with, with this open uh, platforms, it is, it's hard to, to, to fight the pseudoscience, but in, if you have, uh, uh, if you guided, the people, the students, the, the PhD students in, in our uh, courses. So we have a, a course entitled, uh, it's, it's the same, the same means to fight pseudoscience. So you need to search in uh, a trusted uh, sources. So trusted sources for us as academics are the peer reviewed journals, uh, the societies, for example, American Chemical Society, American Physical Society, yes, the Elsevier, Springer Nature, and everything. So for, for students, it is hard for them to, to distinguish which, which source is, is, is trusted. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's hard, but there is, uh, that's, that's our mission as part of the Scientific Morocco Association, is to lead the, these children, these students, to distinguish which one is, is correct or not. So with this, it's, it's with uh, the, sim the simple uh, ideas of science. It's uh, observation, yeah. the data, reproduce the data, yeah. and then see if it's, if it's correct with the, with the logic or not. Um, having this in mind, so uh, for, we, have, we have done some, some many, many workshops for students in order to, to distinguish between this pseudoscience and the- uh, We'd love to hear more about this. Yeah. So we have the uh, notes, please. We have me, we have organized the science camp. So science camp in 2016 with the high school student and mid school students. So one of the workshops are the observations of uh, chemical phenomena and physical phenomena, and then uh, we have organized uh, fact two. So one is is a, is like pseudo scientific uh, phenomena, and one is real phenomena. And they have they have reached that uh, they have the, uh, concluded that the one that is uh, real science is this one or yeah. that one. So th these are you need for for high school students and uh, mid school students. You need to provide them the tools. But for for uh, university students, they know uh, I guess uh, that the the scientific uh, the science is published in peer-reviewed journals yeah. uh, via the, the peer review and using reviewers and review reviews. Brilliant. So. Uh, so one last question. I mean, these programs that you just mentioned, are they, you know, targeted for specific high schools or universities, or are they done online, or you'll be no. able to relocate for them? 
Science Camp is, 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 is on site. Yeah. So Science Camp is on site, it's only for mid school students. All right. uh, but we have also School of Science, it's for high school students. Uh, we organized this with uh, several high school uh, around the, around the nationwide in, the, in Morocco. So we have organized uh, in Tiznit, Agadir, Rabat, Agis Tangier, and Lyon. So it's. Are you willing to come to Lyon because I'm from yes, there? So. Yes, I'm, I'm near Lyon. I'm, I'm in Agadir. You've got to come to Lyon. We have a great time. I will come. I will come. All right, perfect. Glad to hear that. Back to you, Dr. Martin. I mean, as a woman in STEM and as a researcher and academician, obviously, what are some of the suggested actions that we can take to, let's say, to increase the, the students? Uh, participation in space activities. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll go for, for that question in two all sections. I'll start with as a, an academician, and that's for all the students. I can see um, we need to increase the students' participation in space programs and space activities just by doing what we're doing right now. Organizing conferences where we can have an interaction between young professionals in the space domains and uh, the students already on the space programs, that way the young professionals can introduce themselves, their activities, what they're doing, and at the same time, allow the students to learn more about the space. That way, we're having kind of a two-way transfer of the knowledge between two um, kind of elements, key elements. We need to, why not organize uh, webinars and workshops? And I would uh, kind of salute a little bit one of my students and one of the clubs, Iostra I Irosteria Club, Ines. Um, so they uh, they kind of organized uh, last year an event, which which was which were was I'm sorry a workshop of um, kind of they fabricated a little bit planets of all the the solar system, and they displayed it here. They introduced a bunch of information about uh, several telescopes, uh, which was a good initiative, and that was the first here. So um, that those kind of things need to be encouraged for the students so that we can encourage them to um, go into the space domain. We can also uh, initiate courses in the academic curriculum about space uh, for people who are passionate and help them learn more about um, space programs or space domain in general. Uh, going back to the second aspect of the question, which is as a woman in STEM, uh, well, as a woman in STEM, a little bit here, we need to go a little bit lower and go to uh, outreach high school uh, students, start, start from there, and have a one-to-one -one outreach. That way we can express uh, or kind of uh, understand first the needs of those uh, girls and then show them what is, um, what is significant, what is interesting about space as well as I really believe in the fact that we need to have role models in STEM. And uh, from, from here, I would kind of uh, welcome any uh, women in STEM with a certain experience. I would really appreciate if they can serve as role models by giving webinars or giving conferences that would help those girls in STEM be encouraged more and maybe one day they wanna be like someone, uh, like a woman in STEM. And that, that's something I believe in because I had a role model and she was my, I was lucky to, uh, for her to be my mentor. She was um, a professor back in Mississippi State University and she encouraged me in a bunch of ways. So that's why I really believe in the importance of having a role model and a mentor at the same time where you can just express your needs, uh, say, well, what is missing? What do you need? And so on and so forth. And that way they will direct you in a better way. Um, I guess that's pretty it for, for both questions. Thank you again. I mean, you're suffering with me here. Okay, so uh, as much as I love seeing with you here, I mean, the whole day, I'm really enjoying this. I'm having fun, and I hope they're enjoying this as well. I have one last question for all of you. I mean, to get back to, you know, space and Africa in general. So how can scientific communication help in a more prosperous Morocco uh, in particular, and Africa in general? I mean, if you could relate it to, if possible, to Agenda 2063 or SDGs, this is for all of you. If you want to take the lead. Well, I can go ahead and start if I may. All right. I mean, Dr. Green, could you please start? Yes. Yeah. So as head of planetary science, one of the things that we did was we went down to Antarctica and we would go across uh, on uh, snowmobiles uh, finding dark spots on these white glaciers. And these turned out to be meteorites. You can do this in the Sahara Desert where meteorites which fall on the earth all the time. In fact, Morocco is a great place where there's a lot of meteorites for sale. So scientifically, we have an opportunity to connect space with the local region. 
through the analysis and the, uh, uh, and the finding of a variety of meteorites that have fallen on the Earth. The, the meteorites that we find, of course, come from early part of the solar system, how the solar system was put together. But they also come from impacts from bodies that have already been created, like the moon, like Mars. And of course, finding lunar meteorites and, and Martian meteorites are extremely exciting. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we now know by, by studying how the Earth moves around the sun uh, that uh, there's approximately 100 tons of meteoric material that fall on the Earth a day. Now, this burns up largely in the atmosphere, it contributes to our atmosphere, it contributes metals and a variety of things that eventually precipitate out. But these are things that are very local. These are things that can be studied. Uh, these are things that, that connect the local population with the environment uh, of, of the Earth orbiting the sun. So we can look for ways like that uh, to begin uh, the part of getting excited about um, living in Morocco, making observations that are very unique to the area. <clears throat> Just a thought. Such a brilliant thought, though. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I mean, they're staring at me from there, so you have two minutes each. So. Okay. So, um, in order to to uh, for scientific communication for me, it's a really crucial role in terms of the development of the country or the development of all the continent. And again, it works for me two ways. First, um, the scientists or the researchers will need to know what are um, what are the issues, what are the problems faced by all the society members, and that way they can address those issues and find adequate, prob adequate, I'm sorry, solutions to those issues or to those problems. So it's really, for example, let me give an example. Right now we're facing um, food insecurity or water scarcity or urban sustainability. So that's one of the things that we need to understand what the really society members uh, need. And that way we will be able to um, provide solutions that will contribute towards reducing poverty or reducing hunger and uh, why not providing opportunities for um, clean and secure um, housing. And again, it works the other way when the scientist has to have that ability to communicate easily and effectively their information and their knowledge. That way they're expressing it or they're explaining it to everybody. Everybody is concerned with that um, knowledge. And that way we're kind of ensuring or promoting innovations and ha having, again, ensuring that transfer of the knowledge between uh, the scientists, researchers and the society members. Thank you so much. Uh, for us, proper scientific communications will definitely boost the, the education for the proof for us is the, the graduates of Race to Space at the School of Science. Now there are uh, students in many different countries such as Canada, France, and we've done as, as an example of Race to Space graduate. Uh, proper scientific communication also will uh, boost education and we're also fighting in the next uh, side of the science communication which is gender equity. And then the researcher partnership for gold, which is an SDG 17. Yeah. Uh, so we are trying to fight in different sides yeah. uh, from our side in scientific world. Well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So last but not least, I mean, Dr. Green, can you hear me? I just want to say happy yes, Thanksgiving. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to say happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your meal, having fun with your family. Well, I'm in Qatar, and uh, I'm in whatever yeah. suits you. You know, <laughs> you can still have fun there. Yeah, we're we're watching the matches. All so right. uh, okay, so USA, USA, USA. Come right. on, that's right. Beat England tonight. You watch. That'll right. happen. We'll, we'll see about that. Thank you so much cool. for your time. We really appreciate it. You're a legend, Thank man. Thank you so much for meeting. All right, take care. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, just gi just give me a heads up about 15 minutes before him. Yeah, thanks much. Bye. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the this panel discussion. And uh, well, to be honest, we traded a bit on our schedule. But uh, before uh, heading to uh, have a, a break, lunch break, 
uh, we're gonna have like uh, a keynote speech by some of the uh, we've seen like the foundations for space like capacity building outreach and we've seen the role of uh, scientific communication but now we want to see something that uh, there is really active in the space industry we have nicomatic they're operating in the field of uh, connectivity and uh, well they're going to show you their products so i'd like to welcome welcome them here and uh, yeah Hi, good afternoon, every, everyone. Salam alaikum. So my name is uh, Olivier Malach. I'm the business development uh, manager for uh, Nicomatic in the uh, Middle East and uh, Africa. Um, so I'm very glad to be here today for the Six African Space Generation uh, Workshop in, uh, in Morocco as a Nejma sponsor. So um, thank you very much for your warm uh, welcome. So first, I would like to introduce you Nicomatic, who we are, uh, what our activities. So Nicomatic is a medium-sized business, a family business, created in uh, 1974 in uh, Bon Chablais in France, next to the Swiss border. So um, we design and manufacture creative interconnect solution for harsh environment. So we have a large portfolio of different range of uh, connectors, um, like micro connectors, harnesses, and um, as well as MRO and electronic solutions. So let's say we ensure the signal where failure is not an option. Um, in various industries like space, defense, aeronautics, uh, civil aviation, and so on. So maybe can you just go to the next slide? Yeah, so here is uh, some of the, the connectors. We also designed some uh, PCBs, uh, some cream flex, some flexible cables. So about space, uh, we work in both uh, satellites and spacecraft operating in low Earth orbit, geosynchronous orbit, and uh, beyond to resolve some uh, problem like uh, weight and uh, space saving, uh, oxygen-free, reliability, and more flexible uh, interconnect. So our products are using satellites, solar panel, uh, communication, camera, radar, and, um, and rover. So everything can be designed to adapt the most, the most uh, complex project. So I've listed some uh, international space and satellite program uh, that we did, the ExoMars program, to understand if life uh, ever exists uh, on Mars. 
uh, Jad Rabbit Chinese space program, the first vehicle to land on the moon in almost 40 years. Uh, the Amical Sat, a CESUG student satellite project dedicated to space weather purpose. And uh, another uh, ATIS, the CESUG nano satellite project for uh, space weather. So um, I can show you a quick uh, video now to uh, introduce, uh, to present more about Nicomatic. So it's just to show you how we can um, manage a custom project, how we receive the ideas first, how we design, uh, how it works. So the video was filmed in the, our headquarters in uh, France. your connector's performance but can't find the corresponding test reports are you unsure of the technical limits of the connector in your environment all of our products are conformed to or exceed the required norms do you want to know about product performance within your specific environment we can conduct more than 30 tests upon request Try out our online performance calculators now. All of our test reports are available on our website. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. So um, I wanted to talk um, about uh, our uh, ambition in Africa. Um, so today, let's say we, have a, we are a recognized global manufacturer for uh, electronic components. And in most countries where we have uh, set up a branch, we do have a business with a space, um, like with companies, with uh, startups, space agency, universities, and so on. So since we are now based in uh, Morocco, in uh, Casablanca for uh, six months, so we'd like to be closer to all uh, space profession and better understand uh, their needs. Um, it is part of a uh, Nicomatic DNA to have a close relationship with uh, our partners. So as we can see in uh, Africa, the space industry is growing uh, very fast, especially during the, the few years. Uh, with a new satellite development, new foreign partnership, and uh, a growing number of African countries um, developing national space program. So um, 
uh, as we are focusing on uh, components and system for harsh environments, um, this is the place to be. And we have a special interest on uh, student work. Uh, we believe that when you are a student, it can be very challenging for you to find um, financial support, to find a partner, to um, expand your network. So um, uh, actually, we want to say that uh, we'll be here in Africa to support the student development project. And um, we, we place a great importance on the university project. We, we did some with the uh, CESUG in France, the technical university in, uh, in Munich, or uh, Curtin in the United Arab Emirates. So we really want to contribute to local development. And um, we know that students of today are the uh, engineers of uh, tomorrow. So therefore, we want to be here as a key partner and share as much as possible our uh, knowledge. So we'll be out there. We, we have a stand. So if you have uh, any question, if you want to have some talk about your current project, uh, we'll be here. I'm with uh, two colleagues. Thank you. Well, uh, as you have seen, like uh, space is uh, not just one single uh, discipline profession, like from CAD uh, modeling to electronics uh, manufacturing processes it was only one single video and it was enough to show you that whatever you learn will be beneficial for you. So keep being curious and keep that hunger for uh, knowledge. So if you have any questions for uh, Mr. Olivier, well, we'd like to hear them. want to to say something uh, so Olivier talked about Atiz and Amical set you forgot think set and actually I worked on them on, on Atiz and think set so it was my first uh, space project so I'm very happy and humbled to to hear about it here as a success story uh, so yes I'm also I can say I'm an alumni of Nicomatic yeah. somehow. <laughs> so I'm a Nicomatician. So I'm very proud to have Nicomatic as our sponsors. And we would like to thank them a lot for their sponsorship and their support. And they're also having uh, work, the working group number seven tomorrow about how to include Nicomatic and industrials in the space uh, ecosystem in Africa. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, is there any questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, I can hear you. It's OK. It's fine. Yes. So right now it's uh, R&D. We have a laboratory. We running some tests. Actually, I'm, I, I came with uh, Mohammed. is uh, one of our engineers. Uh, right now it's a small team of uh, six people. So just making some design, running some tests. But of course we we, we want to um, contribute to local development and have a, a bigger team. So um, unfortunately, our managing director cannot come today. So I replace him. But um, yeah, the strategy is to to grow and have a small team of, let's say, 20, 20 people. Yeah, actually, uh, right now we are in, uh, in Dubai, and um, the next branch will be in uh, Saudi, because uh, they have a lot of development. We also invest a lot in defense. So um, as you may know, Saudi, they have a lot of defense projects. Egypt, of course, will be a major actor, I'm very sure. And um, so, Maybe I can show you before what's here. Yeah, so we have a 14 uh, branch around the world. And the, the HQ is in France, but we also based in Canada, USA, and many countries in uh, Asia. Thank you. OK, thank you for your time. Thank you. Before you leave the stage. Well, it's funny with this microphone. Well, before you leave the stage, uh, we have uh, our uh, like managers are gonna have something special for you. It's my birthday. No. Maybe, I'll... but maybe <laughs> Nicomatics. Yeah, okay. we just Nicomatician, and uh, you know, yeah, we just actually want to take the time to 
appreciate uh, the, your support and uh, your generosity. Thanks. So this is a small gift from us to you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. It's not done. We still have something. Culinary special sweets from Morocco. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for your support. We were uh, hoping to be a bit generous, generous during the lunch break, but you, as you see, we're a bit late. So um, we're going to have one hour for the lunch break. Uh, let's meet here like for uh, a quarter to two. <laughs>